Hi, my name is Ben Plesier and I am a fervent user of Wappler. So, you have created a content management application or similar where the site administrator, or even registered users can add and delete pages. This type of project requires a navigation bar that can grow with the application. In other words, it requires a database-driven navigation bar. With this video I will show you how to create such a dynamic navigation bar. Please keep in mind that this is a very basic application. It lacks features like being able to rearrange the order of the menu items. Furthermore, this video assumes that you how to create a site in Wappler and how to create a database and associated tables. I have prepared a Node.js site with the usual layout page and content page. In the layout page, I have added a standard navigation bar. I have also connected to a database and created a table named navigation. The table has two fields, ID and item. There is also a sub table named sub navigation. The sub table also has two fields, ID and sub item. I have also entered some data into the tables. For the main table I have entered the menu items that are shown in the navigation bar. In the sub table I have entered the items that show in a drop down menu. In this case it is for the third main menu item. Now for the server side action. For this I go to the workflows panel. Under API, I create a new directory named navigation. Inside the navigation folder I create a new action. For this project, all I need is to read the data in the database. Therefore I call this action, read. Under execute in the JSON file I add a step. This step involves a database action named database query. Under properties, I choose the query builder. In the pop-up I select the main database table. When I do this, not only the two table fields show, but also the subtable. These are all selected as columns for the query. Click OK and save the JSON file. This concludes the server side of things. Back in the page containing the navigation bar, I add a server connect. This allows the front end to communicate with the back end. The server action is the read function that was so just created. The next step is to prepare the navigation bar for dynamically populated menu items. This involves removing all but one of the items. After the remaining menu item, I add a drop down. Again, I remove all but one menu item in the drop down. Next, I select the menu items container and turn it into a repeat area. The expression is set to the read query. Then I select the menu item and change the text to a dynamic value. This value is obtained from the repeat area. I repeat the process for the drop-down label. Next, I hide the menu item if there is a sub-menu. This is done by going down to Dynamic Attributes and selecting, Hide. For the when, I select if the sub-navigation has items. Then I select the drop-down menu item and make it a repeat. For the expression I use sub-navigation. The dynamic text for the drop-down menu item is sub-item under drop-down item.
Lastly I need to remove the main menu items that do not have sub-menu items. I select nav drop down and scroll down to dynamic attributes. Here I select display and show. For the one I select when the sub-navigation has items. And we are done with populating the navigation bar using dynamic values. What next? As I explained at the start of this video, this is a simple example. This should be expanded to allow ordering the items so that they are arranged in the correct order. As well as that, links should be added to the database table so that these are also dynamically populated. If you feel that there needs to be a video on how to accomplish the extras, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.